Don't put this in. <laughs> we are back. We are just under 13 weeks out now, so food has changed a little bit and I decided today I'm just going to take you through a full day of eating so you guys can kind of see what I'm eating at this point in prep. I did have a new low in yesterday, which is cool. Um, I got another like 11-ish pounds uh, I'll have to lose before stepping on stage, but we've got plenty of time, so feeling like we're in a good spot. Uh, but yeah, let's start off with a little brekkie, man. I'm hungry, so I'll show you guys what I eat. Mm -hmm. Both from this side. Yeah. Okay. Breakfast consists of some eggs. We got 138 grams of just egg whites. I have like a carton. Just like this, normal. You guys can get this at any store, pretty much. 138 grams of that and then two whole eggs. To get some fats from the yolks. And then we're gonna do one serving of oats, just like normal oats, which is 40 grams, quick and easy. I don't know how you guys weigh things, but it's simple, just put the bowl on top, zero out the bowl, and then just weigh out your food. 39, 40. I haven't been big on oats lately. I don't like them very much anymore, I feel like. I'm gonna do one scoop of... Are you gonna do it after? Protein, um, yeah. <laughs> I'll do it after. Um, we're just gonna let the eggs cook for a minute, and then once the eggs are done, I'll show you guys how I make my oats. All right, the eggs are done. Scoop these puppies out. We have... The oats in the microwave, just a little bit of water. Kaylin showed me to kind of cook the oats first and then add the protein in after. That way it doesn't get all like clumpy and gross. Because so I always used to do that and I just dealt with it, but we're gonna just, the oats are already in the microwave, so we'll just put it on for like 45 seconds. Let those roll and then we'll add the protein in and we'll be ready to go. See how it's cooked, but there's still water in there. It's fine because when you add the protein in, it mixes, it makes it nice and thick. We'll probably have to microwave it a little bit longer. It's a little bit of water, but that's okay. Just one scoop of protein. Stir it up. It smells really good. Mm -hmm. This has been the standard breakfast, so. Quick, easy, very simple. I mean, everything on prep is so simple. So I don't know if you guys are looking for complex menu items, but I'm not like that macro barista guy or something like that. Like, it's gonna be pretty standard today. Lots of rice, lots of meat, lots of mustard, some veggies. It's kind of a standard day, but honestly, I said it my last full day of eating, but if you season things well enough, uh, you cook it well enough, it doesn't really get too old. I mean, of course, it gets a little bit old, but if you're someone who likes to have like a pretty stringent routine, like I, I don't mind doing the same things every day, it's just kind of how I am. It's not bad, perhaps not that bad. Of course, you start to feel tired and things like that, but uh, it's fun. Just embrace the suck a little bit, I guess. Well, this is breakfast. This will be one of four meals today, so we're gonna get this down. And then probably get some work done like on our computers for a little bit, and then we're gonna go, um, I think we both have legs today. Mm -hmm. We'll train legs. I'll probably just show a couple clips. My last video was a leg day, so nothing too crazy there. Maybe a little posing, but Probably not. So I just want to show you guys what I'm eating right now. Mainly that's kind of the main focus, but we'll eat this, do some work, and then I'll probably see you at the gym. Look at that. How many pounds is this, Kayla? Do we know? 25. 25 pounds. 
So everybody's like, how can we prep on a budget? If you have, if you have a, a Costco membership, or if your mom does, or your friends do, or somebody that you know has it, you can get this at Costco. What was it? Ten bucks. Ten bucks for twenty-five pounds of rice. So it can be done in a cheap way. I mean, obviously meat adds up, but you don't need to be getting expensive ground beef and all this extra stuff. But chicken's not too bad. You can get packs of tuna that are like a dollar a piece. You can get a 25 pound bag of rice for 10 bucks. So there are cheap ways to do it. You just gotta look around a little bit. One cool thing that we did get, since the last time you saw me do a full day of eating, is a rice cooker, which has been very convenient. Kaylin and I eat a lot of rice. So I got this rice cooker and instead of having to cook rice three, four, you name it, times a day, uh, we just have to put it in the rice cooker and then you can keep it warm in that thing for like 12 hours, 10 hours? Yeah. Like 10 hours, so that's awesome. That, you guys, no bueno. So we drain it a couple times, just fill it up, swish it around, drain out all that cloudy mess. That can't be good for you. Right, Beans? Period. But yeah, we used to be big minute rice people. Yeah. We would get like yeah. four boxes a week. And this lasts so much longer. Like that big bag lasts us like a month. Now we just pop the sucker in. Simple as turning it on and hitting white rice. Then it's good all day, so we can just go in, scoop it, add it to our meal, throw some meat in a bowl or whatever. It makes life super easy. So I'm just sitting letting my food digest, but I was thinking back to um, the last full day of eating I did, and you guys will realize that there's a lot of similarities in my diet. I'm eating essentially the same things, just a little more, a little less of certain things. That's where I want to like kind of break things down a little bit because a lot of times you guys will ask, my favorite bulking meal or my favorite cutting meal and the, the truth is that they're they're very close to the same um just the quantities are a little bit less or more depending on what i'm trying to do because you guys want to essentially eat foods that you digest well especially like if you're bulking um a lot of people are like i can't hit my calories it's just so much food i can't do it well like find things you digest well so that way your appetite stays higher for a much longer period of time. You know, things that your body can digest well and that your body like responds to well, it's gonna be much different. You're not gonna feel full all day or bloated immediately when you wake up when, after you eat breakfast. Um, and things like that because digestion is, is super important. So I found things that work for me that I digest well um, on a bulk. And then because I respond so well to those foods, um, when I go into a cut, I'm going to eat those same foods, just maybe a little bit less. Like, you know, there's less um, beef that I'm eating now and things like that that are a little more fatty just because my fats need to be a little lower. But I'm still eating the same basic foods I was eating on my bulk because I digest them like super well and I respond to them super well. Um, and the more consistent you are, to be honest, in like the bodybuilding world and this name of the... It's kind of the name of the game. The more consistent you can be, the more you can like analyze what's going right and wrong and you're able to make corrections and fix things a lot easier than to eat different foods every day um, and not really understand why your body's um, behaving a way that maybe you don't like. So um, I try to stay con as consistent as possible. I'm not really all over the place with my diet. I think it's helped me a lot this last year and I think it would help you guys too if you kind of implement that same sort of style to your own lives. I mean, obviously you don't need to be as boring as like what I'm doing, but um, you know what I mean. You know, just staying consistent, um, seeing how different foods um, react for your body and um, going from there. But it's helped me and I just uh, wanted to give my two cents on that. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, I got the, just a raw gear tee on. Um, we're going to hit legs. Uh, but my last video was a leg day video actually and that's what I'm going to be doing today So I'm not gonna uh, take you guys through that today. Um, it'd just be the same thing. So uh, I'm gonna go train. I'll come back and then um, like I, you guys already saw I have the rice ready So when I get back, I'll show you what my next meal looks like my next two meals are kind of like my big ones of the day And then my last one's a little bit smaller, but yeah, I'll be back in like a couple hours and from there I'll check in so peace Ready hey, everybody we're back, trained legs, so we're cooking up some beef. Uh, 
And like I said before, the rice is already ready, so I just gotta cook up some fresh beef. 96.4, I have eight ounces. Kaylin's gonna do four? Yeah. And we're gonna crush some beef, rice, a little asparagus, a little bit of ghee. I'll show you the finished product, but just gonna cook this up now. We're starving, so I'll see you when it's done. Perfect. Everybody who says they don't have time to cook, we put this in the thing, the rice cooker in the morning. What, how long did that take? Two seconds? We put three cups of rice, put it in there, put some water in there. The beef took maybe 10 minutes. People are like, I don't have time to prep cook, and it doesn't take a lot of time. Everybody can do it, and I feel like a lot of you are making excuses. So, anybody can do this shit. It's not that bad. Once you get a good system down, it's very easy. Right, Kaylin? Mm hmm And everybody else who's seen Game of Thrones in the comments, please at Kaylin on Instagram and tell her to start watching it because I want to start Game of Thrones with Kaylin through this prep. I'll be tired at one point and I want to watch it. And I don't think she's into it very much. So everybody yell we'll at her. We'll try. Everybody yell at Kaylin. Okay, 290 grams of rice. Ghee is like, I may be wrong. You can correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you know, but it's like a lactose free butter. There's no milk it's in like it. It's like clarified butter, yeah. Yeah. People are like, why do you use ghee? It's just a little bit better, man. We're doing 20 grams. So a little bit more, boom. 19, that's okay. Fire. Kinder's has the best seasonings in the world. If you guys aren't hip to Kinder's, Kinder, whatever, get hip because all of it's good. The steakhouse, whatever, buttery, Mm -hmm. Seasoning's good. This one's good. There's a few we haven't tried yet, but I've seen online that look really good. Just mix this up. Last step. We're doing eight ounces. It's gonna be a lot. Yeah. Now, all I do because I don't like to. I'm weird, not weird, but Kayla knows I, I kind of eat everything separate, so I'm not gonna mix in my veggies. I already have asparagus cooked. I don't want to get another plate dirty, so I'll just eat asparagus right out of the tub. <laughs> so 290 grams of rice, eight ounces of beef, asparagus, water. Mustard. And mustard. Zero calories. People didn't know this. I posted the other day that this is like a prep essential. Everybody's like, why? Mustard has no calories. Put it on everything. There so you I go. put it in my cereal. Right, Caitlin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I'm going to eat. Love you. Bye. Another question I come across a lot from you guys, especially is just like, how did I end up like in a position that I'm in now? Or like, what did I want to do for work before all this? And um, truth be told is like, I graduated high school. I committed to go play football at this really small school in Ohio, this little D3 school in Ohio. So I went out there, went through like summer stuff, all the camps. Um, and I was rooming with like a good friend of mine that grew up in my hometown. And then when school got close, um, I was notified that um, they were having issues with my uh, student aid, so I went down to the office, and uh, there was trouble with my f my FAFSA and stuff like that. So um, from there, I was deemed ineligible to play and ineligible to go to class until I got like my tuition sorted out, which I come from no money at all. So there was no like support from my parents as far as like financially paying for college or anything. It was all up to me, or it was all up to just loans. I couldn't get them. So that fell through. I came back home. As soon as I got back home, um, the house that I had grown up in essentially, like I said, we didn't come from any money at all. We lost our home, um, just had financial struggles and things, which, you know, it happened. So we lost our home. But at the same time, my parents um, split up, parted ways. Um, so they were kind of figuring their situation out. I didn't really know where to go. Um, so I ended up uh, just getting a job at a local gym. And then um, my brother lived in the area. He's a year older than me. Uh, got a place with my brother. So my brother and I were living together. I didn't have money to go to school. And I just wanted to focus on beginning, making sure my rent was paid and I could eat and things like that. So um, the gym still wasn't really on my mind. But uh, from there, I went to become a personal trainer at a gym. So I did that. Tr uh, trained in-person clients for a while. Worked the front desk there as well and did like membership sales. Just whatever I could to make some money. And I fell in love with training. I fell in love with fitness. I had some friends that were really into fitness, but my brother mainly was the guy who got me into the gym. So I'm, I'm working there. My brother is doing construction and also working at the gym. Um, 
just no time for school really at the time. Eventually money started coming in, obviously, started making some money from training. I, I decided to go back to community college where I could start at least. I knew it was cheaper, so went back there, uh, paid for community college myself. I did really well. I didn't. I had no direction. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew eventually I wanted to work for myself. With that knowledge, I just knew like what would be most valuable for me, at least, to know. Uh, running a business myself and knowing what to do is like, oh well, the finances um, would probably be the most important. We had social media back then when I was going to school, and I'm like, I can figure out marketing. I uh, at least I think, or I can maybe. Um, I have fr friends that study marketing and stuff, so I really want to know like accounting and finance to know how the back end of businesses work so I can eventually implement that into my own business, whatever I end up doing. So I, I, I found out I was really good at that, so I had really good grades, so I transferred. I got into the business school over at Michigan State. I transferred, studied finance there, did really well there, and got a internship my junior year um, doing consulting for like a big consulting firm. So I did that. Um, finished that up. They offered me a full-time job. Throughout this whole process, I'm into fitness. I'm, I've been competing now for a couple of years. I just like thoroughly love it, but I just know I'm not going to make money by competing because a lot of times you're spending a ton of money to compete. So I just knew like I had to get a job. I also had like a surgery, like an emergency surgery and stuff throughout that time where I got nailed with a huge medical bill. Um, and I just wanted something stable, something to take care of myself, something with benefits, um, something consistent. So I land a job at the consulting firm. I'm starting my senior year of college. I decide, hey, I'm going to mess around and post on TikTok. So I do. One of my first, very first videos went viral on TikTok. And then it sparked like this nice tiny little wave. I didn't think much of it. Um, I was excited and stuff, but I didn't think much of it. I, so, but I kept posting. I started posting more and more fitness content. Um, and then it kind of just like exploded. All This was all last year when I was finishing up school. So the Instagram took off. The, the TikTok took off. Um, and, uh, I was like, this is really cool. People reached out to sponsor me at that point. So I signed with, um, raw gear and gym reapers. And I had like all my favorite companies reaching out, asking, um, to work with me, which was really cool and exciting. Um, but I landed those things. So financially there, I was like, okay, cool. I have like this new income stream that I'd never had access to before. And then I went from there to like wrapping up from school and, at that point, um, I was very close to also competing, and my social medias were going crazy. Doing social media, also balancing, um, diving into like a whole new career, and the social media kept growing and growing and growing and growing, and it still continues um, to grow, um, which I'm very grateful for. It made me believe more and more that I could take this risk, you know, um, which is scary to do. You know, betting on yourself is very scary. So I waited and I waited and I waited, and. Uh, I'm like just about now, currently, um, I'm at the point where I think I could do this like really full time. Um, and I just, thank you to you guys, I just monetized the YouTube channel. It's finally grown to a point where I can monetize my videos, so um, that's like a big life changing thing. You know, it's not, it's not going to be a ton, but you know, it's going to help as well. I'm just trying to like diversify, you know, as much as I can on uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, brand deals things like that. My coaching is doing really well now, thanks to you guys spreading the word. So I really appreciate all the support and stuff. And I'm like almost finally able to do um, full time, like 100% what I'm like actually passionate about and love doing. We're almost there. And I really want to take this YouTube like to the next level, really work on editing and learning how to edit and things like that is important. But this long story is all just to say, there's a lot of you young, men and women who, who want to kind of carve out their same similar path. Well, I guess my advice to you would be just to like lean into what makes you different. I mean, there's thousands of people now who want to be influencers, especially in the fitness space. And they're all kind of replicating each other's stuff. And it's like, no offense to anybody, but you're not going to be a better Alex Eubank than Alex Eubank, or you're not going to be a better trend twin than the trend twins. They are themselves and that's, they're unique and that's what makes them so special and popular in the community. So really find what makes you different and lean into that. Um, other than that, you guys gotta just, you know, there is no perfect time to start anything. So if you haven't started posting, but you're like, I wanna be an influencer someday, you, you just start posting, man. You're gonna learn as you go. You're gonna get better. Um, your physique's gonna improve and people like to watch the process anyways. You don't need to be a perfect human being to post online. Especially if you're charismatic and you're funny and you're entertaining and exciting, like just start posting. It doesn't hurt. You know, people 
dog on sometimes for people filming themselves at the gym. Who cares? You know, at the end of the day, those people aren't even going to think about you. They're not going to worry about you or complain about you two hours later from there. So if, if it's not that big of a taking up that much real estate in their mind, like why should you care? You know, the fear of filming for me was so big for so long. And it's like, if they care that much, that's a them problem and not a you problem. So just, and if you're passionate enough about it, you're going to do it anyways, because I mean, like at the end of the day, this is all up to you and the posting consistently is up to you and working on yourself every day to get better and avoid, you know, negative distractions or friends or things pulling you back. That's all up to you. I come from not a good situation, not a good situation at all. I, you know, was very troubled. Um, so to be able to be where I'm at now is a result of me taking control over my own life, holding myself accountable. I was like doing bad things and I was hanging out with the wrong people and that was leading me down a, a wild path. And, um, you know, there's people who, um, would tell me, you know, like, Hey, you need to make some changes, which of course I appreciate. But at the end of the day, the change came from within. It came from me. It came from being introspective, um, and self-aware. And I think a lot of you guys have that problem too. If you, if you feel um, lost or misguided or like you're doing the wrong thing or that you don't know what your purpose is. Well, find something you like to do and just do it for fun. You know, don't expect to be a big social media famous person, but if you love creating content or bodybuilding or whatever the case may be, then you might as well do it. And eventually, you know, if you're real and authentic and you're yourself, people eventually will catch on, things will snowball and you'll do okay and you'll make it. You got to stay consistent. You got to stay disciplined. And you just got to keep posting good or bad. If the numbers are good or bad, or you only got a hundred likes on this or whatever, just keep going, man. Your time will come. I was posting for six or seven years until anything popped off at all. Eventually it did. But luckily I just enjoy doing this regardless of the number of followers on my screen. I think you guys should think about it the same way. Just do it because you like to do it and uh, things will work out, you know, but yeah, I mean, that was a long story, but, uh, I just know a lot of you guys are struggling finding a purpose or maybe uh want to end up in a position that i'm like in now which kind of came out of nowhere and uh there's some luck involved sure but also um you know when opportunity arises you guys need to be ready for that and prepared to keep going and keep posting and engage with as many people as humanly possible and make tons of new connections and new friends and things um if you're handed an opportunity you don't capitalize on it that's on you so uh just grind it out, guys. I want to see you grinding it out. The fitness community is exploding. There's room for everyone to be big here. So um, hopefully that kind of helps a little bit. But uh, again, I'm grateful for the position I'm in. I do appreciate all the love and support. Um, this has been insane, man. And hopefully this year I get a pro card and all that stuff. And being able to, to afford and travel and do all these things, it wouldn't be possible without this love and support from you guys. So I deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate you. And thank you for everything but um i'm done ranting for the day that's johnny's story of the day but i'm uh gonna get ready to eat again we have two more meals so nothing too crazy but uh i'll see you guys in the kitchen in a little bit all right guys we're back in the kitchen would you look at that this meal is basically identical to the last one so it's not going to be very exciting at all it's gonna be another 290 grams of rice. There we go, 290. Fun fact while I'm in the middle of this, I haven't updated the YouTube folks, or anybody for that matter, about my last full day of eating when I was in a bulk. All that food I showed you guys, I was eating like two and a half times the amount of rice I was supposed to. Don't tell anybody. But my coach saw my that YouTube video and I got on a call with him and I was updating him and everything. And he uh, he was like, "Hey, are you are you weighing your rice dry and then cooking it?" <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking. And then cooking your rice and then eating that. And I was like, yep. And he's like, bro, your rice is supposed to be weighed cooked. And lo and behold, I was eating instead of, I think it was like 300 gra grams of rice dry was like maybe 200. Was it, what was it? 199 dry? Yeah. Something or 299 like that. dry. 
It was like two and a half times the amount of rice I was supposed to eat. So on that bulk, I put macros on the screen. If you look back, like take the carbs on that and like double it. Unbelievable. But it worked out well, right? Mm -hmm. So same as before, 20 grams of ghee. I already had the chicken prep cooked. So that's easy. I'm just gonna take the chicken, shred it up a bit, and then throw it in the bowl. So eight ounces, zero out the scale, and just rip it apart. Mm. My bare hands, like a caveman. You don't mind this meal? No, I really don't mind this. Well, I don't mind really any of the meals yet. I will say I'm starting to think of crumble a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Caitlin and I, at the end of the bulk, had a pretty gnarly crumble habit. Yeah. <laughs> we keep checking the flavors of the week even though both <gasps> of us can't have it. They're probably new ones out. Oh yeah, there's probably should, new ones we out. We should see what they are tonight. If you guys know what it's like to diet, even for just a handful of weeks, I mean, you start to think about all of the sweet treats. And Kayla and I love food in all honesty. Doing this prep stuff blows my mind that we're able to do it because we love food. But we're hanging in there, and honestly, watching the videos gives me satisfaction, so we're all good. Oh, what is that? What is that? Texas cheat cake? Wow. This is raspberry Ooh. cheesecake. You would hate that. Yeah. M&M? Okay, Heck this is awful. This is a terrible lineup. Salted something? Caramel? Salt toffee. That sounds good. This week Mid. is kind of cheeks. Thank God. I'm not even jealous. Just like last time. Chicken, rice, ghee, mustard, asparagus. Easy, quick. I'm gonna shovel this down and I'll see you in the next meal. Love you. Bye. Last meal of the day. We're back and we're eating again. It's a little bit lighter in the rice. It's not as carb heavy, I guess. Doing 190 grams. And what do we do again? <laughs> the Kinders. It's all on repeat. I'm telling you guys, I don't get sick of this. But I know it's repetitive and it's probably like a little not so exciting. But you know, this is what you gotta do. For people considering competing, just know you're gonna have to do a lot of the same things over and over and over again. And that's just part of the process. But so far so good. I'm down almost 10 pounds, which is awesome to be this early in prep and still responding well to the cardio. Uh, I actually, I'm front loading cardio this time around. Like last year, I didn't have to do much at all. I won't lie. It's like people complain that's not this part. I didn't have to do a whole lot of it. But this year I'm starting off with like a decent amount, like a hundred minutes a week right now, which isn't bad at all, but uh, it's working. I'm losing weight, so. 10 grams. So less ghee, less rice, and less chicken. We're gonna do chicken again, four ounces. Um, no veggies, but then we got also a protein shake. As long as we don't stay up till two watching you, we're good. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Have you guys seen you? Kaylin got me hip to it like, what, a month ago? Yeah. Not so, even, like two weeks ago. Like two weeks ago, and three seasons deep now. We're on season four, the new season. It's pretty addicting, but now it's getting a little ridiculous, I think. But let me know if you guys like that show in the comments. A little shake and bake, baby. Two scoops. That'll pretty much close out the day. It is currently 9.30 <laughs> p.m. Well, we got the job done. But that's what I eat in a day, guys. It's, again, it's not the most uh, exhilarating and variety filled, but I enjoy it. It's what I like to do. And prep is going smooth so far, and I'm like really, really, really hoping I have a good competitive year and I'm able to go pro this year, so I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there, and this is a big part of it. So, 
Wish me luck. I'm going to scarf this down. We'll probably take a shower and then probably watch more of you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do that. And then um, I have some a buddy of mine out here that I'm supposed to be filming with soon, which would be exciting for you guys, I think. But I won't spoil that until we get there. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, please like and share the video. We finally are monetized. So the better the videos do, the more I can reinvest into making these videos. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one.